Hi, today I'm gonna tell you a story about historical overview of international monetary system. What is international monetary system? An international monetary system is a set of internationally agreed rules, conventions and supporting institutions that facilitate international trade, cross-border investment, and generally, the reallocation of capital between nation states. The international monetary system establishes the rules by which countries value and exchange their currencies. It is the basis and system of international flow of money. Next is the history on international monetary system. Number 1. The Era of Bimetallism. Before 1870, the international monetary system consisted of bimetallism, where both gold and silver coins were used as the international modes of payment. The exchange rates among currencies were determined by their gold or silver contents. Some countries were either on a gold or a silver standard. Number 2. The Gold Standard Era. The gold standard involved buying and selling of paper currency in exchange for gold in the request of any individual firm. In this system gold is freely transferable between countries. Participants in the system included UK, France, Germany, and USA. Each currency was linked to a weight of gold. Under gold standard each country had to establish the rate at which its currency could be converted to a weight of gold. For example, suppose the US announces a willingness to buy gold for $200 ounce, and Great Britain announces a willingness to buy gold for £100. Then £1 equals $2. Here are some pros and cons of this era. This leads to the demise of the gold system in 1914 when outbreak of the First World War crushed the first economic world order. Economic pressure of war caused county after country to suspend their pledge to buy or sell gold at their currency's par values. Number 3. Between the World Wars. In this era, both international trade and capital flows shrank compared to period before World War I. During World War I, countries had abandoned gold standard, except for the United States, they later returned to it only briefly. By the end of the World War I, Great Britain was heavily indebted to the United States, allowing the US to displace it as the world's foremost financial power. By the early 1930s, the prevailing order was essentially a fragmented system of floating exchange rates. To protect their reserves of gold, countries would sometimes need to raise interest rates and generally follow a deflationary policy. As the Great Depression intensified in 1930, financial institutions were hit hard along with trade. In 1930 alone, 1345 US bank collapsed. This caused aggravated economic hardship for other countries. During 1930s, the US raised trade barriers, refused to act as an international lender of last resort. Number 4. The Bretton Woods System. Bretton Woods system arise due to World War II, impacts that created inflation, unemployment, and an instable political situation which caused every country to struggle to rebuild their economy. The Bretton Woods system was a dollar-based gold exchange standard, where United States dollars become the key currency. This means that United States dollars was pegged to gold at $35 per ounce, and other currencies were pegged to the US dollar. Bretton Woods, dollar was the only currency that was convertible into gold. However, in gold standard, other currencies were also allowed to be convertible into gold. Here are the advantages of the Bretton Woods system. The demise of Bretton Woods system starts when the trade balance of the USA become highly negative, and a very large amount of US dollars was held outside the USA. It was more than the total gold holdings of the USA. Number 5. Exchange Rate Regimes An exchange rate regime is the way a monetary authority of a country or currency union manages the currency in relation to other currencies at the foreign exchange market. Here are the historical timeline which will take forever if I explain one by one.
Okay done. Now, how do countries choose exchange rate regimes? Here are the factors to be considered with. First is financial depth indicators, then inflation, economic size, capital mobility which is increased financial integration promotes more flexible exchange rate regimes, next is production diversification, and last, external vulnerability. There are four of importance of exchange rate regimes. Stock markets reading symbolize growth indicates demand of currency and position of currency in world there are three major regime types fixed exchange rate regimes where the currency is tied to another currency mostly reserve currencies such as the US dollar euro British pound sterling then flexible exchange rate regimes where the economy dictates movement in the exchange rate and last, managed exchange rate regimes, the most prevalent exchange rate system today. First is the fixed exchange rate. In fixed exchange rate, to maintain the local exchange rate, the central bank buys and sells its own currency on the foreign exchange market in return for the currency to which it is pegged. Here are the pros and cons. flexible exchange rate in flexible exchange rate if supply outstrips demand that currency will fall and if demand outstrips supply that currency will rise a currency that is too high or too low could affect the nation's economy negatively affecting trade and the ability to pay debts therefore the government or central bank will attempt to implement measures to move their currency to a more favorable price here are the pros and cons. Last is managed exchange rates. It is also known as a dirty float. A dirty float occurs when government's monetary rules or laws affect the pricing of its currency. With a dirty float, the exchange rate is allowed to fluctuate on the open market, but the central bank can intervene to keep it within a certain range or prevent it from trending in an unfavorable direction. Here are the pros and cons. No currency is wholly fixed or flexible in reality. In a fixed regime, market pressures can also influence changes in the exchange rate. In a flexible regime, the central bank may also intervene when it is necessary to ensure stability and avoid inflation. However, it is less often that the central bank of a flexible regime will interfere. I think that's all for today. See you in next stories. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.